Hey, so this week we're going to break down some of the Twinkle Twinkle challenges that I've seen online. And then next week, stay tuned because we're going to show you how to create your own intro. All right, enjoy. All right, so um, Bart Orr's version. Okay, so let's stop there. We'll just, we'll just kind of focus on the intro. And one of the things you want to do is you want to get that melody line. Right, so you have that. Would you have that with the melody, and then with the bass, you have um, right. And so when you put them together, and and what I would do, and let me move this around a little bit. You know, when trying to get this, when you try to get this again, focus on the. When you're trying to learn these kind of movements and these kind of voicings, you want to focus on your extreme notes, meaning your root and your top. So, right? All right, something like that. And again, like I said, I'm not going to do note for note. Uh, I'm just kind of trying to show you the melodic line that he's doing. So that first chord you have. So, and again, I'm not using the exact thing. I'm going to do my own interpretation. That way it goes faster. All right, so, so you have this here, which is just a minor 7 chord. And then, so it, it, really I would do a, um, let's, make, let's make this an E major 7, right? And then for this next one, we're going to make it a B. We're going to make it a B flat major seven, but voice that way. Okay, so it'll be. And then when you go here, and by the way, this is E flat, B flat, B and F sharp. And then, and then we'll make this regular. We'll make this regular A flat minor seven. Okay, and then um, what's next? remember what's next. Let me uh, listen to it one more time here. Oh, okay. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so. Uh, oh, oh. Oh, I see. Okay, so after the... After this one, instead of going to an A flat, we're gonna go to a B. And let's let's just make it a regular old um, A flat minor. I mean, technically we could make it like a B major six here, but let's just make it an A flat minor with a B on bottom, and then that's the real that's the the move. So, but I'm gonna I'm gonna change it change it to this which is really just an F sharp add to drop to because we've dropped it we've dropped the B flat down so it'll be oh. I like that so let's do that okay so again I've just filled out the chords more. I didn't really add too much information. And then do that. So here's that note there. So he's going from that E flat to the E. Like that. That's how I'm playing it. Again, I'm not doing necessarily a note for note transcription this time. I'm just kind of breaking it down. Okay? So let's get the last part of this and then we're gonna be done with this intro. We're only foc I'm only focusing on the intro for this one. And then we'll stop. Okay, so yeah, perfect. All right, so, um, so, um, so, da, 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 hit that B and then.
Okay, so what I would do there is um, and what what um, what's actually going on theory wise when he goes da, 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 that's the, that's kind of the melody that's going on. But what he's doing is he's using he's using dominance to approach the B, which is where the song was in B. So he's using dominance to get to that B, and the way he's using it is. Um, See those chords there? Those are dominant chords because you have a da, da, da. when he hits that C sharp there, it's the top of the E flat dominant chord. And then when he gets when he gets to this B, it's the, it's the top of a C sharp dominant chord. And then he goes to an F, it sounds like an F um, F7 sus4. And then so and I keep when I go but that's just kind of like a five one, right? Da, 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 da. But then if you add some more notes to that, you know, it's a little bit better. But I like the A flat in there. And then like that, okay? All right, so that's our first, that's our first breakdown. Okay. 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 So what what's going on here in in this in this one is you have a so so what she's doing is okay so she's trilling up on that it's just a regular O C chord with the E C and a G. And then it's kind of like everything kind of moves up uh, a minor third, except the C to E, which is a major third. Okay, so that's what we're doing. And Daniela uses a lot of these third kind of uh, open voiced. She uses a lot of open voice chords, um, and a lot of um, like kind of like what I could call approach voicings because she's she's getting to this chord here, which is a D major, but she's getting there by going around it. That's right before it, after it, and to it. Okay, and then when she goes, now of course you can add a lot because I said I'm not doing it exact. So you, you, can, you know you can make these major seven voicings by adding a B there, right? And you can you can add the uh, a sus two here with the E there. Again, not exactly what she did, but just giving you guys information on how you can kind of, you know, if you want to add more to it. Now, you... Okay, so... Now, that's the whole chord. This chord right here... This chord, which is a, uh, a D-flat um, 9, sharp 11. This is her approach chord. This is what she's getting to. So she's kind of teasing you with this chord. But everything is moving to this chord here, so... Right, but then even this chord is only the beginning of a progression. The beginning of the progression would be okay. So it's it's she's this is the chord she's trying to get to, but this chord is the start of a three note progression that would end with this B, da C sharp C B. So that's what she's trying to do. So that's the progression. Now, how it sounds, how it sounds all together. Okay, so that's how she's doing that. And of course, the notes would be. Um, um, this is really just a. It's really just uh, like I said. These are six nine chords. But if you want to look at this as being just more a regular, you know, a diminished chord. It's really a diminished, but the B is on top because that's her melodic line. Okay, now let me see what else is going on in this song. A lot of melodic information here. Oh gosh, Daniel. 
All right, so um, so yeah, yeah, stop, stop, stop. All right, so um, again, I'm not doing a note for note because otherwise I won't get finished with this. Okay, so I'm gonna come as close as we can to this thing here, um, and then she's going, and then um, she has this voicing. This is, uh, I believe, she's implying the G. Major seven. That's right before she goes into the um, or right before she does that kind of. Right before she does that, she hits a um, she hits this kind of a or this kind of voicing, which is implying the G major seven. So that G major seven is about to approach those chordal, well, what sounds like chordal voicings. Right, but they're not quarter, they're really six nines, which is why I said this is this her her intro is more focused on six nines. But let me let me just listen to it, make sure it, I hear that dominant, that G dominant that she's hitting there. See, she does it fast. So so and then and then um so the the, the six nine chords would be they're all black notes, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, F sharp, six nine, six nine. Then we're gonna go to a dominant, um, a D dominant chord. Then we're gonna go to a diminished. And then we're gonna go to, um, something like that. Okay, so here's how it sounds together. Um, starting from those six nines chord, six nine chords. Okay, and then right, which is your A nine sharp eleven. So, so hit this first, and then we're gonna go up a half step, and then with the dominant chord, it's gonna be a A D F sharp C. With a diminished chord, and these are all dumb. Uh, um, Daniela, I think she's allergic to root voicings. <laughs> you could tell her I said that because she likes to play things in um, mostly drop two or open voice positions. So this is a dominant, right? Drop two because the second note from the top is dropped. Same thing here. Okay, same thing here. We have a D diminished seven here, and this second note from the top is dropped. So we have. And then, um, okay, and then we have something she's doing here. Um, right, I'm gonna make up my own thing for that, okay? So that's probably what it is. So here we go. Figure out what's next. And then she goes. Right, okay, and then she starts it. Okay, next one. Um Rodney Rodney East. So what we're gonna do with this one, intro again, just the intro. Um, but instead of teaching you, I'm gonna listen with you so that I teach you how to decipher what notes are. So kind of teach you my process again for ear, trying to figure out some of these chords. So let's listen to it first. Okay, so the first thing you noticed here, what's the first thing you noticed? Now on the screen, I'm gonna throw up a little poll here. Is this major or minor? Is he starting in a major or minor key? Which one is it? Okay, vote on the screen. Okay. All right, now, you should have said, you should have said minor, right? So let's, that, that gives us a lot of information in terms of what the chords are gonna be. 
if you know that it's minor. Um, Okay, now he's major. Okay, so if you notice, if you notice, this whole this whole intro is a darker sound. It's a minor sound. So when trying to figure out voicings, then we should know then that most of these voicings sound like minor voicings. Maybe some minor sixth in there. Maybe a couple of diminished um, whenever they're appropriate. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. Let's figure out these chords together here. Let's figure out the first three. Okay, so let's get that first one. So that first one, well, we already said minor voicing, so let's go with the A minor here. Very good. Next one. Well, we know that the twinkle twinkle is a perfect fifth, right? And a perfect fifth from the A will be an E flat. So let's go with an E flat vo uh, minor voicing. So A, A minor, A flat minor. I need it. So we know A flat minor voicing is here. E flat minor voicing. So we have. Okay. Now, is he have the seventh? The seventh is important to know. He doesn't need it. Um, he doesn't need the stat, the seventh. Is is if he wants to. It just depends on the sound he's going for. I'm going to listen for it. Yeah, it's in there. Okay, so. But it's he's not playing two D flats. I'm hearing it one. So he's probably going. He could be doing it there, or he could be doing it there, okay? But it's a, it's a strong E minor sound. I'm not hearing the sevenths as strong, so that's why I said he's probably only doing that D flat once, and this is kind of how I'm kind of trying to figure out what they're doing. So it'll be, okay. Okay, and then what's that next chord? Let's figure out that next chord. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do little star. So here, um, now one of the things that you need to do is listen for intervals because this would be minor, but if we play this as a minor chord, it's gonna go. And we know that that's not right. So we know that it's not an E minor here. So what I'm gonna have to do then is guess uh, the quality of this chord. And what I'm going to use is um, what I call intervallic um, components. It's something that I, uh, I started um, teaching on my website about how to hear. And sometimes I'm not listening for chords themselves. I'm listening for the intervals, um, the distances between the notes. Now, if we listen here, a little star. Okay, so if you're listening for intervallic components, I'm gonna hear a major second. Okay, so I'm hearing that. Do you hear that? Major second, minor third, and then um, another minor third. Let's listen for that again. This, this is, this is, I'm listening. The interval, listening for the interval is going to help with the chord. Some of us are so like, what's the chord? What's the chord? I'm not. I don't really want the chord per se. I want an interval. I want the intervals contained within the chord. So check this out. See, so, so heard that? Okay, so now with that information, with the information that I have there, and I'm messing up the, uh, and I'm going to another whole page. I don't even know what that is. Uh, let me drop that down. Okay, so we know the first one's an A minor. We know that this one's an E minor. And now we have. So uh, it's as easy as dropping that interval Right, being able to hear the interval again, that's relative pitch. That's not perfect pitch. Relative pitch is just hearing the distances. So we know it's so we know it is at the bottom. We know the interval is a major second here. So let's just put them all together. Or which is what I think he did. 
Okay, so hear that. Back to the A minor voicing. Okay, so that's how we figure out. That's how we figure out voicings and get those some of those color notes in between that sometimes some of you have problems hearing. Right? Let's try that again. Okay, so now I'm hearing the seventh. You hear, I'm hearing a seventh on little. Okay, so now now that gives me all the information I need. So I know that that third chord is. And then, okay. So, okay, so I heard the interval of the major. Why am I keep doing that? So, right? Because I'm here, I heard the major second there. Da, da, da. And then I heard the, the seventh. Did I say seventh? You know what? I'm, I'm doing a seventh from the E flat. That's why I'm calling it a seventh. Because um, I'm, I'm, I'm tonicizing the E flat at that point. But let me not, I don't want to confuse anybody. It's the sixth because it, the, the bass note isn't, well, the root of this chord would be an E. So it's, it's technically a major six. So that would be your, your voicing. So here's the notes. And then... Right, my ear doesn't always hear what's being played. I'm, 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 I'm hearing an E flat in his, as a root, okay? And that's why I said seventh, because I'm going from that root, right? But, um, you know, technically it would be a major six, okay? Let me keep on going. So what we need to do to get to figure this out, let's let's get a bass line. Let's get a bass line. Um, let's get a let's get a bass line with, without the thing being in the way. All right, so let's get a bass line. So let's get these chords. So we have Okay, and then And then he goes to the major there. So let's see what I'm doing here. Once I once I know the bass line it's much easier to try to figure out the chord qualities um so um okay so how we're gonna have a c minor voicing there and then some of you may have heard that diminished and then he did this right so
Okay, so let's do those chords. So we have an F sus, F9, or F13 actually. So the bass is gonna go F, G, C. Check it out. Okay, and then in the right hand you have an E flat chord. It's inverted. And then an, an A minor seven. Okay, so in the left, here's the right hand. Okay, just a regular OG chord. So we have an E flat, and then we have an A C G, and now we have a G B D G. Put them together. Kind of open up these chords a little bit in the left hand. And now we have some seventh notes going on. In that first chord, we have an additional E flat played with the thumb in the left hand. And then an F with the thumb in the left hand. And then we have the G and the E filling out the chord. So he's just doing these chords over and over again. Um, so now what's happening is a lot of his improv stuff is done um, right before he gets to that F. A lot of the improv move that's, uh, moves that are going on are implying a C dominant at the, at the placement of that. Let's keep on going. I want to find the, um, the 73 year old guy that did, 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 um, did the... Chad, I know he's here. I think that's him right there. Right, let's look at him. The one that um, says he wants to do a gospel style. So we're going to look at him. Hmm. What, I got to play a gospel style? Uh, twinkle, twinkle, little star. All right, I think I know it. circular movements and it's interesting the way that he's playing this I love his interpretation uh, of the song so here we have okay so we have a so we're gonna start off with just a regular tritone right and then he goes down a half step in the left hand and then goes down another half okay so Okay, so that's what he does there. And then he does a transition chord. And, and the bass actually, because he has an interesting move here that he's doing because it sounds like it's a circle of fifth, but then he changes it up and it's not. Because a circle of fifth would have been. That would be more of a circle of fifth pattern. But he doesn't do that. He goes. Right? <laughs> it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. So the corresponding chords would be, um, let me start from top. And then, and then back to the A, and then the B, and then he's going to a D minor, to this E, uh, dominant chord sharp five right which is a really interesting voicing so let me kind of show you what's going on there so after you go um and then this is a transition chord it's not really part of the song so this is, this is a your ace um your a seventh here and then how is just a d minor chord Then you have a G seventh, and then you have a C seven major, and then from here he goes 
to an A minor 9 actually let's let's leave the C off and that which changes it to a sus would be A E G B and an E and then B E A in the bass which is a B minor chord B F A D and then there's an E7 E D G sharp and D and then all right so Oops. That part is is an E a D minor nine. The 11 is the melody, the G. This is another way to voice it. E, G sharp, C, and a D. So. So it'll be. So. Or. Just a regular A minor um, triad, really. And then keep everything the same. Keep the C and the E the same and drop to a G. And then. So it's really just a. So it's just an A minor, C major. Okay. Second inversion. And then. A D major chord. But the way we're voicing it is. That, that B gives you the, the tension that you need, but not too much where it can still sound open. And then you can keep this as a, a D major add two, which is a, with the E at the bottom, drop that F, put the D on the top. Okay, really nice intro. Very, very um, amazing way that he voiced that and put that together. All right, next one. Okay, he's 10. So let me, we're gonna try to see if there's anything um, I could break down in this one. Break that one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do? Okay, so let's let's rewind that. Play that again. Play it again. Those chords. Okay, so that's what I want to break down. Um, the chords. How I wonder. <laughs> he's basically going. How I wonder where you are. But he's he's reharmonizing that, and we want to kind of see what chords he's using. So what, what I would say is that major, uh, for the most part, he's going major seven chords. I kind of listened to it, paused the video, went and listened to the chords. Um, he's doing major seven chords, and he's going to sus voicings, uh, alternating between sus voicings and um, six nine voicings. So the, the, the progression goes something like this. And then something like that. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this. Um, you have a C minor seven here, and in the bottom you have an E flat and an uh, A flat. And put so go ahead and stick in the G. So 
See, they have that G69, the popular G69 voice in here, which is just, um, uh, you know, you, you just need to know what the notes are, which are D, A's, and then G and E's. All the notes in the pentatonic scale, except the B, which is why they say note three, because B is a third note, so it'll be. And then again, we're going to a major seven, which is a D flat major seven. And we get a little D flat chord with a C on top and double that. And then we're going, again, we're going to, technically we're going to like a six nine again, but because we have the B pressed, it becomes a 13 chord. Otherwise, it would be like a six nine. So here it is, so it'd be. And now we're gonna go from an E flat, major 7 which is a regular E flat triad and add the D do the same thing double it up on that right hand and then I'm gonna to go to an A69 but the way I voice it because technically you can you know you can just kinda of, you could voice it like that but I like voicing it this way so I'm Okay. Again, this is my own interpretation how I'm playing it. So that would be A, E, F sharp, B, E, F sharp, A, and a C sharp. And then he's he's making a jump into a um, F sharp major seven. Okay. So. Okay, so that's same thing. We're doubling up here. And then on this one, again, kind of like a 6-9 or a sus, a sus voicing there. And then he's going to a B major 7. All black notes with a B at the bottom. There's a B major 7. And then... All white notes <laughs> with a B flat at the bottom is a B flat major seven, which is what he's doing. Right, so that's what we have. Or something like that. All right, stay tuned for next week when I discuss Par Paris Bowen's uh, song and then also how to create your own thematic intro uh, for a challenge like this. All right, take care.